Hi everyone, welcome to DSCI in London. Naval News is the official media of the Naval Zone. In our day one video, we're focusing on new systems. We're starting with new anti-ship missiles, and then we'll take a close look at some of the new ship designs on display on the show floor. We are on the stand of Israeli company Rafael was showcasing for the very first time the new Sea Breaker anti-ship missile. Sir, good afternoon. Can you please introduce yourself? Yes, good afternoon. Very nice meeting you and very nice to be here in a real exhibition after a long time. Uh, my name is uh, Yoram Israeli. I'm uh, head of business development and marketing in uh, Rafael Naval Systems. Um, spent uh, 30 years in the Israeli Navy in different positions, uh, basically expertised in uh, guns and uh, missiles. So, Seabreaker, your latest anti-ship missile, what makes it unique compared to existing missiles? Ah, that's a good question. First of all, I would like to say that we are happy to introduce Seabreaker to the world. We, um, it's not a new uh, missile, it's not a new system, but we, have now, we are now able to uh, exhibit it. Um, it's not only a C2C missile, as you mentioned, but it's a multi-service uh, system. It can be on land, it can be on different kind of uh, naval platforms. Basically, it's a multi-service uh, system. What are its key features? We in Rafael decided uh, some years ago to go to a different attitude and instead of having like um, I would say normal uh, radar seekers to shift into the world of uh, electro-optical uh, seekers. So Seabreaker is basically as you can see here, it has an electro-optical uh, seeker. The most advanced one like we do have the best technology for electro-optics in Rafael. It's really based on the lot of experience we have, not only in naval systems, but also in aerial systems. Uh, I would say that if someone is familiar with the SPICE gliding bomb, which is a very good product uh, of Rafael, it's based on the same technologies of IR, IIR, and uh, mainly dealing with um, AI and deep learning, which means that uh, this uh, Seabreaker missile basically will take a broad picture of the target area and then choose the right target. It will not hit a neutral target, but will go with a library behind into the target itself, which defined by the operator. The, the scale model here, is it one-to-one? -one? Because it looks very compact. Yes, one of our advantages is this is one-by-one one, uh, scale. I would say that, generally speaking, we are four meters long and only 400 uh, kilos per uh, missile. We had in mind that this missile should be uh, deployed from very small uh, vessels. So you can implement this kind of solution on a small petrol boat up to uh, frigates. What is really unique is that this really po compact uh, missile is flying up to 300 kilometers. I think this is a very nice range and it has a very significant uh, uh, warhead. So we have a long distance and a very significant warhead, a bit more than 100 kilos of uh, TNT. It's not a TNT, but related. It's not only for naval targets. As I mentioned before, it's not only multi-service, but it also fits for land targets. And one of the unique uh, things which I would say that we are able to have a fully autonomous uh, mission and we are fully capable to hit naval targets, land targets, and we are not uh, sensitive to GPS since the system can work GPS independent. Do you have a customer yet? Usually we do not uh, say which our customers, but we do have a first customers. And maybe if you will look behind, you can see that we are already having a production line. I think it says a lot. All right, well, thank you very much for your time and explaining, introducing the Seabreaker to us. Thank you very much. For the very first time, IAI is showcasing the scale model of the Sea Serpent, a new anti-ship missile that the company is proposing in association with Thales UK to the Royal Navy in the scheme of the SSGW, Surface-to-Surface Guided Weapon Requirement. 
to learn more about this weapon system, let's hear from a marketing representative from IAI. Sir, good morning. Why do you think the Sea Serpent is the best solution for the Royal Navy SSGW requirement? The system was designed and tested to meet the exact peer threats that the Royal Navy is facing. Can you tell us a little bit about the commonality between the Sea Serpent and uh, the existing Gabriel family from uh, IAI? Yes, so Sea Serpent was developed in parallel to Gabriel 5 and it's based on the Gabriel heritage, the Gabriel family heritage. Can you tell us a little bit about the, some of the performance figures of the missile? Today I can also reveal that uh, the distance is actually 290 kilometers. Uh, in the past we said in excess of 200, so I can share with you today it's uh, 290 kilometers. Uh, it's, uh, uh, you can have an option for fire uh, and forget or fire and upgrade uh, capability. It's all weather. It's a very key, important figure. Uh, all kind of weather you can launch and, and hit the target. Can you tell us about the cooperation between IAI and uh, Thales UK? Yes, Thales is a very uh, uh, important leading company in the UK uh, with a vast experience uh, in selling and providing complex weapons to the Royal Navy. We looked carefully for the right partner for us uh, in the UK and, and uh, chose Thales as a leading provider for complex weapons uh, in the UK and together we are looking to answer the social value requirements of the Royal Navy in the SSGW program. All right, thank you very much. You're welcome, thank you very much. So the SSGW, as a reminder, is a program to replace the existing in-service Harpoon anti-ship missiles aboard the Type 23 frigates of the Royal Navy. We are now on the Fincantieri booth where Vard Marine out of Canada is showcasing this brand new design and scale model of an OPV. To learn more about it is Derek Buxton, Vice President of Business Development. Derek, good morning. Good morning, nice to see you. Thanks for welcoming us. What can you tell us about this new design? Okay, I can tell you that this is the Vard 7115. It's our 115 meter long next generation offshore patrol vessel. Um, it's a new design for us. It's in keeping with our history as uh, ship designers of offshore patrol vessels. And so we're really building on that pedigree. Um, but with this particular design, what we've done is we've added more features and capability um, to make it a light combatant uh, for a different naval client. Um, and so there's been some special considerations with regards to this building on our OPV history. For instance, um, we've added um, some flexibility around mission payload. Uh, to uh, enable uh, different payloads to be embarked and deployed from the ship. You can see that in the center of the ship with regards to the set down area for mission payloads and containerized uh, arrangements, um, as well as a multi-mission bay integral with the ship's hangar for boats and other offboard systems. Um, with regards to its naval's capability, it's, we've given special consideration to naval roles and naval standards insofar as uh, damage control and stability is concerned. Uh, and we've enhanced some of the features around uh, the different signatures of the vessel. So the acoustic signature, magnetic signature, infrared and radar cross-section have all been special considerations for this particular design. Um, and then on top of that, of course, being a light combatant, uh, we've added some additional features in terms of sensors and weapon systems that you wouldn't traditionally find on an OPV, which is more tailored to a constabulary or a law enforcement organization. Do you have a launch customer for this design? Um, not, not particularly. We're at the, uh, the beginning end of a new campaign. We uh, have designed this in mind of a specific program, um, which uh, is underway as we speak now. Um, but we believe that this particular model sort of fits into the market space uh, in, uh, in an area which is quite unique in, for a light combatant, but would have strong appeal to many, many different organizations and navies around the world. And so we're looking to sort of market this on a global scale. I'm now visiting SH Defense of Denmark. You may remember the company. I covered them at Euronaval Online 2020 when they launched the Cube system. The head of 
Danish ship, ship design company OMT is also present and showcasing for the first time the MPV-80, the next generation offshore patrol vessel for the Danish Navy. Let's find out more about this new design of the ship as well as the latest news with the Cube. Carl Christensen, you are the CEO of OMT. What can you tell us about the key features of the MPV-80? So one of the key features of the MPV-80 is that it's designed around that we have created quite many container positions on the, on the ship. We have 32 positions that can, where we can plug in containers like the Cube. So we have had a very close collaboration with Henry Fournier and his team uh, basically to, uh, to create a ship that was uh, born cubed. How many containers can you uh, carry inside the, the vessel? Uh, it's designed for 32, uh, so quite a lot of, uh, of these containers. I believe it's unprecedented for a naval ship. Uh, I, don't, I don't think there are other container or navy ships that can uh, take 32 containers, uh, no. And uh, what is the current status of the program? Have you signed a contract yet with the Danish MOD or Navy? No, no. Uh, this is uh, our concept design for, uh, for a new generation of uh, flexible ships that the uh, Danish Navy is interested to procure, but there's no contract yet. But we have uh, formed a consortium that will, that will offer this product. What is the, the schedule? When is the uh, Danish Navy uh, looking to procure this uh, new this, this new class of ship? Uh, Danish uh, Danish uh, Minister of Defence announced uh, in, in July that they intend to to go into a procurement phase for such vessels. Uh, there will be a design phase first, and that's basically what we have created a consortium for. MPV-80 comes in uh, three versions, both a Navy version, a Coast Guard version and a search and rescue vessel. Basically the same, same platform that can be uh, reconfigured in many ways. Uh, it also comes in a polar variant and a non-polar variant. What the ship needs to do for the cubes is that they need to provide the infrastructure for the cubes. So that's where you can plug in the cubes to the ship and the ship can provide uh, resources to the ship that could be power, water or whatever. I am now with uh, René Bertensen, the CEO of SH Defense, to learn more about the Cube. René, good afternoon. Good afternoon. What's the latest news with the Cube? <sighs> well, the Cube has uh, taken off. It's, uh, it's uh, apparently a very fantastic product that all the nations are looking into. Uh, we are now in dialogue with more than uh, 30 nations about containerizing equipment for them inside the Cube. On the poster behind you, you show a number of uh, configurations. Uh, can you tell us briefly about them? Yes, uh, w w since we have done it as an open source, this means that uh, all equipment manufacturers are invited into the concept. Uh, we have, have uh, big companies like uh, Atlas Electronics, uh, L3 Harris, some of the big companies, Leonardo, who has joined the concept, which means that we now have something like uh, 50, close to 60 different companies who are now part of the Cube system. Not that we are purchasing the equipment, but the navies who are ordering this type of system, they can actually go out and talk to the uh, producer of the, of the equipment and have it mounted on the Cube itself. And we will have a catalog so they can pick and choose. So it goes from uh, weapon systems to crane systems to launch and recovery systems to uh, even side loaders. Yeah, side loaders, environmental solutions. We have uh, top launch drones, we have underwater drones, we have uh, surface drones. And uh, on top of this, there is also the green technology. Because a lot of the navies are talking about having a greener profile. So now we also have modules with fuel cells, battery packages. And some nations say we want to be green because they really want to be green. And others just say it because they have to say it, it's part of the politicians. Uh, but they have also been convinced now that if you have a battery package and you run anti-submarine uh, warfare, you can actually run super silence because you don't need to run your, your gen sets, you can run on a power pack instead of a battery. So this means they are really efficient of finding submarines. Thank you very much. Thank you.